Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope uh, today we'll have a good time and we will learn something new. Uh, today we have a challenge for those who call themselves Ustad in Indonesia. In fact, they are nothing but a bunch of potatoes and they are fooling those poor Muslims in Indonesia claiming that they have knowledge. I never met any Muslim actually, they have knowledge of anything. Yet, but they are all of them. All of them, they are so good to make videos to refute us in our back. Like, you know, that's, 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 that's gossip in their back. What about be man and call me and refute me? The only one actually they call us, I mean, rarely you can find somebody, he's a shaky call. And the one who call us, they are a bunch of kids, they say whatever they want. I mean, who care? We don't accept Al-Bukhari, we don't accept Ibn Kathir, we don't accept, they don't accept anything. They make their own religion. Those people, they don't count. What about those? Those who call themselves Ustad and they want to teach you about Islam. Who are they? What they know? How much they know? In fact, all of them, they knew nothing about your religion. All of them. They are fooling you, taking a lot of money from you for nothing. Today, challenge to the Muslims, especially those who claim to be cleric in Indonesia, is very simple. The Muslims agree that God, he gave Moses command. Where we can find the command of Moses in your book? You know, your book is a scattered. And when you talk about Moses, you find yourself all over the place. All over the place. Where we can find the commands which is given to Moses in the Quran? A Muslim, he will say to you, oh, the Quran says uh, uh, many things as an example. Uh, you shall not murder. No, it doesn't say that. The Quran command you to murder. If we go over the commands here in front of us, you say, you shall not, you have no, let's go one by one. You shall have no other God, gods before me. Muhammad, he brought a God. His name is Allah. Musa has never heard of him. And not only that, he claimed that this God has no spirit. Which means when a Muslim they say Allah is the same God of Musa, well, if he is the same God of Musa, then from the first book in the book of Genesis, it says God, he created the earth and the heaven and his spirit was in the top of the water. His spirit. So God have a spirit. The God of Islam has no spirit. So the first thing we learn from the Ten Commandments, that Muhammad, he broke the first commandment, he brought a God, is not exist in the Bible. God who has no spirit. So he cannot be the same God. Secondly, the commands of God in the Bible says, you shall not make idols. You Muslim, you pray in the direction of cube, which is nothing but a small room, claiming that this is the house of God and it's holy. In the same time, your prophet, he kisses stones in the shape of a private part of a woman. And not only that, he claimed that this stone is going to erase your sin we will go to this part back after we go over the king commandment you shall not take the name of the lord your god in vain the quran allow you to take and use the name of god in vain uh, you know allah will not take you accountable for your false oath remember the sabbath day to keep holy Muhammad, he don't care for the Sabbath. What happened to the Sabbath? It's gone. Even you Muslims, even on Friday, you work. You know, you work, you do all, all kinds of things. And there's not even a single verse in the Quran saying, this is the day uh, which is equal to the Sabbath for the Muslims. All what the Quran says in a Friday, when they are called for a prayer, come. Why? Because Muhammad at that time, he used to observe Sabbath, actually. And Muslims, they are busy doing shopping before the stores close. For Sabbath is coming by afternoon. Remember, Sabbath start by sunset, not by the second day as today. You know, we go by the 24 hours method. Honor your father and your mother. Muhammad did not honor his father, neither his mother. Actually, Muhammad, he says, my father and your father in hellfire. And not only that, he called those who they are not believing in his God, Najis. So Muhammad, he called his mother and his father filthy. You shall not murder. Muhammad, he killed many people, including women and children. As an example, a woman, he cut her two pieces alive. Her name is Ummu Qurfa, and she is over the age of 40 by tying her legs into two camels. 
You shall not commit adultery. Muhammad, he found, having sex with his maids, in the bed of his wife, and his wife Hafsa, she said to him, Fi bayti wa ala sariri, in my house and in my bed, you faithy Muhammad. You shall not steal. Muhammad was accusing the Quran of stealing even clothing. And even the Muslims, they are pro so proud about how many caravan the Prophet he attacked and he stole the product. Imagine you have a, a bunch of cars in the highway and the guy he claimed to be a Prophet, he stopped those cars, he killed the drivers and he take and he steal all the product they have. This is what Muhammad was doing. And the Muslims are proud about such a thief. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. <laughs> Muhammad, he bear false witness as much as he want. Actually, he taught his, 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 uh, his, his men as an exa example when he killed Kaab, uh, uh, Ibn al-Ashraf. He said, uh, 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 one of his men, he said to him, I I'm going to lie to him in order to kill him. He said, do, do it. Okay, no problem. <laughs> so the guy, he go to the house of the old man who is very old, claiming that he is coming in a friendship. When he entered the house, he put his sword inside his chest and he killed him. And what this guy he did, he was opposing Muhammad as a prophet. That's all. He did not take a sword. He did not kill anyone. He did not kill a Muslim. He did not kill a Muslim. You, Muhammad, did everything against the book. You shall not covet. Muhammad, not only he took the neighbor house, Muhammad, he took his own son, wife, and he went to her house and he flirted with the wife when the husband was not there. And then after that, he took her to his bed and he slept with her without even getting married. When she said to him, who is your witnesses? She, he said, Allah and Jibreel. So what we learn from this, that Muhammad, he broke all the commands of God. So how he can be a prophet of God. But now we are going to focus on something, one thing at a time for the Muhammadans, so they can, do, already they are confused, already they are weak. This is a religion of weak. We will focus on this one. You shall not make idols. You Muslims kiss the black stone. And we ask you, why you kiss the black stone? You say, because it's coming from heaven. <laughs> this is what the pagans do. Pagan, they believe that stones present God. Actually, most of pagans, they don't believe that stones our God, as much as this, this, is, this, this is a stone, will give them the power of God. And this is exactly what your Muhammad and do. If we go and review what Muhammad he did and what Muhammad he teach about the black stone, we will find that you are a pure pagan people. Ibn Abbas said that he used to kiss the black stone. In different hadith it says that Muhammad he used to, uh, to, to, to kiss the black stone and he cried and he said to Umar, Huna, here, here the tears of sorrow will, be, will, 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 will come. And he used to cry in the front of the black stone. Umar, he got Muhammad busted. He said to Muhammad, he said to the Muslims, well, I know that you are a useless stone and you are useless. You are harmless. Neither you, you, there's no use of you and there's no harm. There is no benefit of you. Read the hadith. And this is coming from Abu Bukhari. But then, why Muhammad then he kiss it? If there is no benefit from it. It doesn't make sense. In different hadith, Muhammad he claimed that if you touch the black stone in the Yemeni corner, by doing that, that erase your sin. And as you see, this is not a da'if hadith. He said, I heard the Prophet, the Messenger, saying, Touching them erase sin. And I had him say, whoever circumlate seven times, it's like freeing a slave. So now, Muhammad, you don't need to free slaves. Oh, just go to, no, go around the Kaaba seven times. And that's it. Free your freedom slave. That's it. <laughs> Keep your slave at home as a slave. So, Muhammad, he, you know, uh, uh, when he starts saying free a slave, people start complaining. And he himself, he cannot do that. So, he said, oh, you know what? Forget about it. Just go around the Kaaba seven times. Forget about the slave. As if It's as if you're, for, you're free a slave. But the important here, you see the pagan Muhammad saying, touching them erases sin. I challenge those Muslim Ustad to tell us how touching stones will erase your sin. And not only that, Muhammad, he claimed that the black stone is a living stone. What does that mean? The black stone is going to come on this earth and is going to have eyes. And is going to have a tongue. 
And this is exactly what pagan believe, that those are stones, they speak, they have will, they have a brain, they are, they are powerful. So look what Muhammad, he said, just said, and he did. He said that touching the stone will erase your sin. And this stone is going to be in the judgment day, is going to be a partner with Allah in the judgment day rule. What the stone will do? Allah is a stupid. Allah don't know what you did. The black stone is going to witness for what you did in, the, in your daily life. That's mean the black stone have a memory which Allah has not. The messenger of Allah said, the black stone, by Allah, he swear. Allah will raise it in the day of resurrection with two eyes by which it sees and tongue that it speak with, with testifying to whoever touch it in truth. The black stone, my friend, is going to testify for you. A black stone. So how you Muslims or Muhammadan, it's better to call you Muhammadan actually because he, what, what Muslim mean? <laughs> you are following Muhammad blindly. You are not following anything. You worship Muhammad. Muhammad is God uh, for you and Allah is the puppet of Muhammad and all of us we knew that this is the story. If we go to the images of the black stone which you Muslim provide us and I say thank you. If we go there we will see something very funny and very stupid about this stone because this stone nothing left of it this stone nothing left of it there is a little tiny rocks few rocks fixed between rocks i don't know if you can see it in the screen so where is the black stone which allah is going to raise in the judgment day where we can find it how this stone will survive into judgment day it survived by putting wax even this stone is not exist no more it is gone proving that muhammad is a fraud because if this stone is going to stay until judgment day then what is this what is this every few days they have to put wax around the stone to keep it look like a stone because there's nothing left of it al Qurmuti, when he destroyed the Kaaba and he, he, he made fun of Allah and he says, hey, where is your bird? <laughs> Allah, <laughs> hello, where is your bird? The one who protected the Kaaba before as in the chap chapter of the elephant. He destroyed the Kaaba. He took the black stone. He took it to his house. He make it poop stone for more than 21 years, according to Muslims. And yet Allah did not send his birds. And then they have to pay him money. And look, it looked like a toilet seat. And now, according to your prophet, Huh? Let me make it more clear. Hold on. According to your prophet, this black stone is going to come in the judgment day. Uh, let us see. I'm trying to get a better image so we can see. I don't know if you guys you saw with me what we are talking about. This picture is a clear, but anyway, let, let me do, let me use it with this one. The picture is in the shy in the shape of a woman private part, and all of us we knew that. And you do not need to be a genius to notice this. But according to Muhammad, this black stone, which supposedly the stone of Allah, which is supposedly we should touch it, which supposedly it erase our sin, which supposedly is going to have eyes and tongue, which mean the following. This stone, my friend, in the judgment day, is going to be in a very weird look. According to your God Muhammad and his prophet Allah, the black stone is going to have two sexy eyes. is going to have a mouth and don't forget that this mouth is going to have a tongue
And obviously this tongue will be big because going to witness to more than a billion or maybe two billion Muslims by the time the judgment day happen. How in the world you can believe in such a thing? So we want the Ustaz, the one who claim to be not pagans, the one who claim that we are not pagan, we are people who believe in God. His name is Allah. He is one God. But yet you believe in a fiction and stupid stories and Muhammad is telling you that even this black stone is the right hand of Allah. How this stone can be the right hand of Allah? This is what Islam is about. It's a bunch of garbage, nothing left of this religion. Even this black stone, even there's no black stone in the black stone. There's a bunch of little tiny rocks we showed you in the picture. And this is what the Muhammadan they have. And yet they claim that they have a stone which is going to witness for us on the day of judgment. How come Allah, he, be, he needed you to fix the black stone by wax? Let me take a selfie for this so we can publish it later. Excuse my art. I'm very good in artist. You know, like I'm, I'm born as an artist. What I can do. All right. But look at this. I mean, a human being sometimes is a crazy. How, how, how people do believe in this is such a garbage? Eh, it happened. Uh, <clears throat> There's tons of video in YouTube showing you life on videos, how they fix the black stone every few days. By doing what? By putting a very expensive wax mixed with amber, musk, So it's going to smell good. And here we go. Those are the pictures. Allah, he need the maintenance guy to do maintenance to the black stone. I thought this is a stone preserved by Allah. So now we need to do waxing. Even the black stone need waxing. This is your stone. This is your religion. If we don't wax it, it collapse. And the same as the Kaaba. The Kaaba always flooded by sewage. Let us show you. So people will not say we are making things up. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Ask yourself, if this Kaaba was chosen as a location by God, how come God, he chose the worst location in the world for the Kaaba, where always rain come and all the sewage of Mecca cover the Kaaba? And look, it looked like a pizza, what it's called, pizza tower in Italy. They fix it. This is an old picture, you know, then they start adding cement. Thanks to the American, you know, come with concrete and all those stuff. Otherwise, this Kaaba was a piece of garbage. But look at this. Allah, he chose the location. The location is the worst place in, the, in, 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 in Mecca. And, you know, imagine you are uh, the most rich person in the world, not God. And you ask an engineering, engineering company to find the best location for your house. And then after a few weeks, your house is flooded by water and sewage. This is the house of God. Let us assume that Allah, he made a mistake and he put the sewage house there. I mean the Kaaba. Can't Allah, he make a miracle and he lift up the ground up. So the sewage will not cover it. I mean, come on, just lift it three meters up. Can't Allah do that? No, he cannot. He's a potato. This is the house of God. If you like to learn how to swim, I can take you there. Hmm? Look at the dirty, filthy water. Look at the color of the water. This is what Islam is about. So we are going to wait for the Ustaz if they dare ever to answer what we are saying. If you are already worshipping one God, his name is Allah. Why you are attached to stones? A stone have going to have a tongue. Stone is going to speak. A stone is going to fart. A stone have eyes and tongue and lips. And a stone will erase your sin as we showed you. What kind of religion this religion is? Since when stones erase sin? And since when God he have a house is covered by mud and sewage? And since when we cry in the front of stones and they erase our sin if we touch them.
And since when we need to pray in the direction of a Kaaba, <laughs> but yet we believe that Allah is in the sky. Uh, and since when we can even pray in the, you know, by the way, Indonesia, they were praying all those years to Africa. If you go in the news, you will find where, where is Allah? Where was Allah when the Indonesian were praying to the direction of, of Africa? Let me find you the news. For more than 1,000 years, Allah, He did not send you somebody to find the correct direction to you. This is in the year 2010. Until then, 2010, not long time ago, just 10 years ago. You Indonesia Muslim, you are praying in the direction, in the wrong direction, praying in the direction of Africa, Somalia. Where was Allah? Do you see it? This just 10 years ago, all imagine how many hundred million Indonesian they pray all those 1000 year. Praying to what? To Somalia. So when they say to us they have God, they have nothing. They are a bunch of pagan and they follow a pagan prophet. Copy the video, share it with your friends. I hope you guys, uh, uh, people in Indonesia, you will see the truth and the truth will set you free. And this is a Christian Prince was with you with my love to all. I will try to come tomorrow again live on air in the morning if I can, if not the day after. Thank you. And we are going to wait for the stars to answer our challenge if they dare to answer. But you know them, <laughs> bunch of potatoes. They make videos in my back, but nobody dare really even to refute what we say. They don't even dare to speak to me, for they are coward. Thank you. See you. God bless you. Bye-bye.